save humanity. What about now? The aliens said to save humanity. I'm gonna do it. Go humans! I'm coming out here every Tuesday at 4 until we stop the war. Power to the people. I want that flag to stand for freedom again. It doesn't mind. Yeah. yeah. What do you mean, free story? <laughs> I feel like I could bring you sweat. Don't smoke marijuana. Oh, no. No, no, no. You go to jail for that. We're going to take our last question. I really thank you guys. I mean, this has been a large group, and I know that it's uncomfortable in here. So we've got our last question right here. Oh. Okay. I know that the drug companies are a big part of the problem. I mean, they spend, there's an incredible amount of money spent on that. If there was, say, a plant that you could grow in your backyard, <laughs> and, uh, say, everything from glaucoma to, to insomnia to, to help cancer patients, would you support that plant? <laughs> Might live up to the other two, but you get my point. <laughs> what if, just for a moment, you suspended your disbelief and you imagined a world where Frank Barris was president? It's a world where there's no more war because I have stopped war. There's no more war on drugs because I'm no longer arresting Americans for ingesting substances that can only harm themselves. It's a constitutional thing, son. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wow.
How, how are you? Good, how you doing? All right, I've got poor stage cancer. Oh my God, I'm sorry. I didn't know that. That's not your fault. <laughs> no, but... Um, <laughs> well, I, pre I appreciate you... My, my standard reaction to that. Yeah. <laughs> it's, a good, it's a good reaction. It's a good one. Yeah. I, humor is the key to survival. You know that. <laughs> Ex exactly. Exactly. Well, well, thank you for for car. This this is unexpected. I didn't I didn't. Uh, thank you for responding like this. Here, let me take you off of here. Well, I'm, I'm here just laid up and um, got some time. It's just on my hands, so I figured I'd give you a call because oh, there's I obviously you probably know there's a huge divide in what the remaining survivors of the pranksters are about. Yeah. The uh, the Wikipedia story is just simply untrue. Yeah. Well, I know that now, now that I've heard your story, I, I'm really questioning the, the official story. Well, the, you know, the thing is, the officials, you understand something, that there was a huge movement to discredit the leaders of the 60s yeah. by the government. Oh, yeah. You know? Oh, I know. <laughs> so, and so, so to make Neil a, a bum on the railroad tracks counting railroad ties is pretty much the way they'd like his legacy to be. Wow. Wow, that's that's a motivation I hadn't even considered, and wow, wow. See, the thing is, is that Neil was well. Neil gave me my my prankster name. He called me Merlin. How you doing, gentlemen? Hey, right, right. I know you're homeless. I know you all that. Huh? Did you just pee behind me? Nope. Thought I heard a kitten. There's been some kittens back on the back side of that bush line. Um, so I thought I heard. Where are you headed to? Uh, over to Starbucks. Okay. No problem. I just wanted to... Cool. Thank you. Yep. Because, you know, the moment I admit to it, that's a f serious crime. I think I'm stupid. I'm going to tell them the truth. Of course I beat there. I love how he was going with that voice of, come on, just go ahead and tell me. Like, I'm that stupid. Like, I don't know, telling the cops the truth means a whole bunch of rigmarole. Lying to them means going on with my day. What am I going to do here? Hmm, this is a tough choice. I know I'm for truth and against lies, but in this case, I'm just going to lie. I've had that kitten yarn in my back pocket the whole time. Always wondered if I'd ever use it. What were you doing back there? Oh, I thought I heard a kitten. What, did, what can I say, man? I can't... He actually went with, yeah, there's been kittens back there. Like, what? I know I made it up. I know I made it up, but this is so I can go on with my day. The whole thing is, is that Neil was the Mercury, the messenger of the pranksters. He was the guy who put people together, Aldous Huxley, Lenny Bruce, all the people that he wanted us to meet. He basically instigated 99% of that. Wow. So, and that's something no one's ever written about him. You know that see that bizarre. Yeah, no, that sounds like a big part of the story. I I'm surprised it. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> well, what I mean, and so, go ahead. No, yeah, go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Man. Well, I was gonna say. I mean, he actually went with. Yeah, there's been kittens back there. Like what, dude? I just you know I made it up. I know I made it up, but this is so I can go on with my day. Because if I tell you the truth, then it becomes a ticket, becomes court appearances, all because I had to urinate just now. No. No, I'm going to lie to the cops and go on with my day. Thank you. Ha <laughs> ha Frank Parrish. I, I've been doing a, a lot of research on this because I was given, I was born on a, an army base and when I was a, an infant, like right after birth, I was given heart, high doses of fluoride. My mother was given a little thing of serum to give me every day and then when I was old enough to take pills, I was taking fluoride pills and these pills affected me. I mean, this is my, 
Can you hear that? That, that's what my spine does all day, every day. Hold on a minute. What's up? Let there be light. Boom diggity. Uh huh. What? How'd you do that? I mean, right? I don't know, man. It's pretty impressive, I gotta... <laughs> How'd you do it, though? I'm an alien. Yes. Yes, you are an alien. Yep. Yep. Anywho, it was on a military base, and none of the other peers from my age group ever were given that fluoride except for my soulmate, who I met about 20 years ago. She was also born on a military base. She was also given the serum. She was also had all kinds of bone problems. She was in a wheelchair because her bones didn't, when she was a kid, because her bones didn't uh, form right. And then she died of cancer when she was 34. 14 years ago. Wow. What so kind of cancer did she have? It was breast cancer that went immediately into her bones, which... That's where mine is right now. Oh, really? That's mine. So I know, yeah. what, that, I know the pain you're going through because that's... I know how much that hurts. <sighs> yeah, I mean, I could outlive the cancer, frankly, but the pain is a whole other matter. Yeah, that's the same with her, yeah. Well, that, that's yeah. No, that's. I'm grateful for what I got here and now. I live on a boat. I'm in paradise, really. Nice. That's. And you know, um, I'm thankful. The only regret I have is the friends and family and that I'm leaving behind. You know, because I know they're gonna miss me. Yeah, of course. view that's normally in postcards because it's beautiful but I see it every day this, this is my boyfriend so sexy with his hair I'm in his ducky pants sailor duckies like a seaman duckies and his face Say so he doesn't like being recorded. Okay. And here's me. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> this is the view of my foggy window. Oh, and this is the view of the real the ocean. Because I live on a boat. Hold on, let me close my window so I can hear you. Hello? Hold on, I'm closing my window so I can hear you. Okay. Hey. Hey. What are you doing? You're in a tent?
something else I have to tell you. This is a little weird. You know where the Beatles got their name? What? Where the Beatles got the name the Beatles? Mm -hmm. They named themselves after the Beats. Beats were poets in the 50s, the 40s, 50s, and 60s. That um, there was a bunch of them, Jack Kerouac. Um, it was just a whole bunch of just brilliant freaks. And the one, there was one guy that motivated them all, that made them all become, instead of just bums with a college degree that just went and got a regular job, he made them be these incredible poets that influenced everyone from the Beatles to the Rolling Stones and everyone else. I mean, the Beatles named themselves after the Beats. And the Beats were based around this one guy named Neil Cassidy. Neil Cassidy had a wife. Okay, She wrote a book that totally told the back end story of seriously I mean the the best part of all the artists and poets was that she wrote this book telling what they were really like she's like no I raised his kids he was a fucking he was always running off with other women and and partying with these guys and I was trying to you know raise a family and this and that and the other thing it was great it's a great book this is his wife okay anyway she's still alive and for since long before I even knew she had a book, long before I even knew who she was, I knew Neil Cassidy, I've always thought that I was <laughs> him reincarnated. Since I was, since long before, I, like in, in the early 90s, from that point on, I've always thought I was, that's who I was in a previous life. So I found her email address, and I, I wrote to her, and um, it bounced back. I'm like, oh, fuck, never mind. But then there was an info thing, and I sent it to the info thing, and the info thing was Neil's, one of Neil's kids runs the website. So one of his kids got this email from me saying to her, her mother, I mean, she's older than me now, because this was, he died in 68, and I was born in 72. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> what, you, 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 he died in 68, and you were born... I'm telling you, I'm still absorbing your story because I, I saw it last night and I'm just, I, I, I'm going to give you a full, full disclosure here because most people think this is the crazy part of my story. Since I first, my first copy of On the Road, that picture, that infamous picture on the cover of, of Neil and Jack, uh, where, where Neil's head is like this, he's like cracking his neck, from yeah. that moment... Through right now in this conversation, I have believed in my heart of hearts, in my soul, that I am him reincarnated. Really? And I know that sounds crazy, and I know it sounds... No, 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 I believe in reincarnation, it's possible. I, 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 I believe, I do too, and it's actually, science has been starting to prove, uh, there, there's, there's actually researchers at the university level who have been studying kids who have memories of past lives and like right. scientifically studying that they like will show a picture the, these kids are, an array of pictures and they'll pick out things from that past life that are the correct answer. So, I mean, there's scientific, but, but I mean, I took it, I've taken it pretty far. Like I reached out to Carolyn uh -huh. many, many years ago and she didn't want anything to do with it, but Jamie and I corresponded for a while. Which, uh -huh. which was, I mean, I, I, to this day, I'm not sure I did the right thing because it was, I, I know it caused the family a little grief because the rest of the family was like, come on, he's just some crazy guy. <laughs> so, so I sent the email and then the daughter writes back and says, well, you know, I sent it to the rest of the family because there's three kids. There's two girls and a boy and they're, they're all in their like, like forties now and the, the Carolyn must be, oh my god, she's got to be like 70 now. You wrote her and told her that you <laughs> That I thought, I, yeah. I said, I, yeah. <laughs> I had to tell her. I've been unable to, it's been, the other day when I was just, it was about two weeks, about a week ago, a week and a half ago, when I just kept going over and typing away at something, I was writing that letter to her. <laughs> I had to do it. I, that's what makes me think. It's almost, I don't want to say it's haunted me, but it, it kind of has affected my life. Like I, after, uh, in college, I gathered, I, I like kind of fell into this group of like crazy genius 
creative people and I felt like it was my job to be the motivator of them. Like I've kind of played the Neil Cassidy role in and it's not and it's weird because I don't it, I don't claim to have a single memory of his life. It's not like I have any memory of being that person in a previous life. I just like I said from the moment I saw that picture in every instant since I just feel like that's what it is. I said something in the letter that wasn't true. I talked about who I thought Audrey was reincarnated from, and I named a character that he had known, and I don't think that's who it is. Because the more I think about the letter, the first letter I sent, and then the second letter, and the third letter, so three letters so far. Um, <laughs> and you know, nobody's ever done it. No one's ever just, I, I figured there was gonna be like, you know, three people a week are saying these, they're Neil reincarnated. They're like, 30 years ago, a psychic said that Neil was born as a girl somewhere. That's all that anyone's ever said about it. And I said, it's possible that that happened. Because I think, your mom told me when I really heard her in her voice, she said it was 11 months. And that monk in that book that I have, 11 months after he died is when he was, he was reborn. So, so I think, think he, my mom was? I think your mom was, <laughs> I think your mom was the other icon of that generation. Neil was the icon. They never met in that generation. Yeah, it's hard to explain it, isn't it? I, I think your mom is... She's Marilyn. Is Marilyn? I think... I saw Marilyn her. Monroe? I saw Marilyn. I've seen Mar. I've looked down and seen her. Seen Marilyn. Yeah, me kind of too. Yeah. <laughs> And I think that's why I met her in this life, because we didn't, couldn't meet in that life. Even though she was the, she was the perfect, the, she was the, Marilyn was the perfect epitome of human female. And Neil was the perfect epitome of human male. And then I got born in this broken body. <laughs> we, the one thing that we found really um, coincidental, uh -huh. in quotes, <laughs> was that Neil was extremely quiet and introverted at the time. Which kind of, that's a red flag right there. It was like, he it, he was truly a psychic. I mean, yeah. when you talk with Neil, or try to talk with Neil, um, you know, you try to get a question in an edgewise in his ongoing monologue, <laughs> and he'd answer the damn question before you got to ask it. <laughs> so he was definitely a sidekick. <laughs> And I heard about the uh, b the knowing the, the numbers off of dollar bills. Right. No, I mean he was he was an amazing human being. Uh, Kerouac said of him uh, that he would have been the great American novelist had he stood still long enough to write the book. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah, and I and I saw an interview with Carolyn yesterday last night when I was watching more videos, and she said something about when he wrote the first third, she referred to it as when he still could, like he couldn't. Right. Yeah, like that was... It was, you know, I mean, if anyone was hip enough to record anything you were saying, um, you know, that that stuff is out there in the archives yeah. of the world. Oh, my God. So, yeah, that's all been going on in the past couple of weeks. If I've seen, like, I've had a lot of my mind between that and the stuff at Starbucks and everything else. <laughs> 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 yeah, this is... Uh... So now my next letter, I have to wait a while. Because I, I've kind of stirred up things. Go to a psychic. Let's see what I the fuck's don't going want to just on. go to a psychic. I need to find someone who is psychic. End bank bailout. Raise the minimum wage. Save social security. Build infrastructure. I'm only homeless till so you put me in the White House. Frank Barish. I want to get on. Can we talk about some issues here, please? I want to like get ending on the drug war. Can we talk about that? Stopping the TPP. Can we talk about that? No. And that are very important to the country. Yes, yeah, so those are important to the country. But I just want to get the answer here. The oh birth certificate was produced in 2011. You continued to tell the story. You could tape it. Yeah. <laughs> if it won't, it won't, like, it won't tape it, it won't go in, but if it actually worked, it won't get his consent. Like, if he says Audrey, will be like, yeah, we want to do it too. Yeah. Well, no, I just keep it hidden and on, like it has been for the past, me telling that story, because I needed to get that on tape. <laughs> I needed to fucking say that in a way that I could just be, I'm just videotaping myself, but I needed to, 
tell that story like that because I that's really happening I really sent those emails to this like famous person and she really responded and wow long story short um, Neil said I gotta go for a walk in the jungle and I said are you crazy man there's anacondas out there there's jaguars there's, you know smugglers and baby fuckers and god knows what else out there in the jungle you don't go there at night man yeah you know it's completely untamed yeah so all i had on me was a flashlight and i said well you better take this with you if you're insisting on going but i don't think you should do this neil but he he wanted to go well in the middle of the night there was automatic gunfire in the jungle and the proprietor of the place that we were in said well it happens all the time it's hunters or whatever blah blah but that's where the bullet holes came from in, in his body Dude, it, it all came and he, it wasn't even neil neil used to go to a jazz club and there was a guy named charlie parker who was the most brilliant jazz musician that ever lived he used to play and neil used to sit there and dance in the audience and then neil inspired all these people that inspired bob dylan and the beatles and everyone else and the, all of society is trickled down through that <laughs> And I sent an email to his wife saying, I thought, uh, I think I'm him reincarnated. So that's kind of crazy. <laughs> <laughs> or, it just might be true. That's what you want me to Alright then. <laughs> I think I need to smoke one more weed on your level. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> So it's a mystery as to who was behind it. actually here uh, for a redress of my grievances. I want a redress of my grievances and uh, why don't you guys to stop bugging me? Stop bugging me! Please! Stop bugging me! Stop bugging me! Thank you! You guys stop bugging me! Please! Now you have a thousand ladybugs in your lobby. What happens now? I don't know. You don't know? Am I not breaking law? I gotta leave? That's it? All ladybugs? Just gonna let me go? Well, I was hoping to get arrested, but... All right. I seek a redress of my grievances. I want you to stop bugging me. Well, not you, personally. Sir, what are you here for? I'm here to seek a redress of my grievances. Okay. Why did you dump all those bugs all over Bobby? Because I'm a big fan of metaphor. Is this still on? Yeah. Oh, look at what you did. I know. Think we should shut down the building? Is that... Well, now you got bugs in your building. Why have you been? Why has the federal government been torturing me for the last ten years? You don't know about. But now we're going to have a conversation about. All right, wait. That's not funny. Oh, it is very funny. That's what happened. Political protest, son. Okay. What happens next? Hey, come on out here. Oh, okay. Can I get my water or no? Okay. That's okay. What's your name, sir? Here. Can I let go of this? Yeah. Let me set these bags down. I have no weapons. All right. There's like a, a, a small, Let's dull set, knife. You have bugs, sir. I do have bugs all over. Because I was protesting the uh, the whole...
See the bugs? Okay. Okay. What's your What's your business today? Uh, doing a political protest. Okay. Well, you can't go inside the federal. You can protest all you want out here, uh -huh. but you can't go inside the federal building like that, sir. Yeah. Okay. You can't do that. When Neil Cassidy and Ken and the rest of those guys went across the country, Neil was the bus driver, right? Yeah. And so in every state, they get stopped by the cops, wondering what the fuck this is. I bet. I bet. And Cassidy being a, a blue-collar, you know, working man's hero, not like the rest of us, he looked very like a truck driver. Or, yeah. You know, like, you know? And he'd go out there and start joking with the cops, and they'd be guffawing and pat patting each other on the shoulder. And then they'd inevitably ask him, who are those freaks hanging out those windows? <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. And Neil would always say, well, they're, they're mental cases that I'm taking back to New York. <laughs> <laughs> so he and played the, the official. <laughs> <laughs> it worked, huh? That actually, it yeah. worked? Wow. It was a partial truth. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. Here comes the shadow, yeah. You all got a boat for Frank, right? Oh, you all got a boat for Frank. What's up, man? I think we need haircuts, man. Seriously. We live in scary times, oh yeah. But if you're riding Frank, if everybody rides in Frank Barry, we'll be president, oh yeah, oh yeah. The Republicans are nuts. Last time I heard one of them make sense was Rand Paul, his father. You know what I mean? Oh, the Democrats. They could have been somebody. Instead, they're a corporate party for the people who own Hillary. It doesn't matter that Hillary Clinton is nice or she's going to appoint liberal justices. She's owned by the banksters. Ooh, I'm going to get him back. I'm going to scare Frankie B. Doop to do. Boom! Oh my god. I so got you, dude. Okay, I need to stop playing around. I don't have a dollar to my name. I gotta go panhandle. <laughs> And I'm not jumping. It's called Suicide Bridge. And it's a long fucking way down. Nah, they don't get to win. Fuck that. I love life. I love my family. I love my friends. I love humanity, man. I love them. I believe in the Constitution of the United States of America. I believe in freedom. I believe in justice. I'm ready to become Frank Barish. Are you ready to write me in? Watch me scare them off. Do do do. Boom! Oh my God, Frankie! I got you. <laughs> that was that was a good one, Frankie B. I know, right, man? <laughs> That's good. Good funny stuff. I am the mouth. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I met David Bowie today. What? No way. <gasps> oh my god, Mr. Bowie. Hey, Mr. Bowie. I'm a huge fan. I love your music. I met David Bowie today. What? No way. <gasps> oh my god, Mr. Bowie. Hey, Mr. Bowie. I'm a huge fan. I love your music. I was once poor, man. Can anybody help a brother out, please? Yeah, I'm hungry. Mr. Mayor, there are so many better candidates. Mr. Mayor. No better candidates. Mr. Mayor, could you give a flower to Mr. Manis for me, please? No. Please? Sorry. No. But it's it's for Mr. Manis. It's just a flower. Much better candidates. It's good for you. It heals people. What's behind his death, I don't know. I know that the Federalists covered it up. Which is weird. They didn't want me to see the bullet holes in his chest. And then they cremated him. And Yeah, and Carolyn had asked us to ship his body back. So the next day he was, you know, ashes in a mason jar. I mean, that's obviously a cover-up. Like, there's no... For the plant that grows this? The plant you can eat? The plant that has 11 grams of protein and 14 grams of fiber? 
three grams of fat and they're all omegas? A balanced protein you can live on for 40 years in the desert like the Jews did? Let my people go. In the Bible, canna, let manna, my people go. Don't just do it because it's let cool, Let my people man. go. Do it because it's smart. Letting American farmers grow hemp? Please. Stopping the war on cannabis Let my patients? people go. Your jails are overcrowded. Dear Mr. President. Let my people go. Dear Mr. President. It's, it's a plant with beneficial healing time qualities. Time to do Let my people something go. for us. There are very few things that William Buckley and Cheech and Chong agree on. But this is one of them. In the name of common decency. End the war on cannabis. Let my people go. End it. End it. Call it off. It's time. It's time. It's time. Now. We can do this. Please. Stop the war against me. One time, so many doses. Look in the doses. Stop the war against the most important plant on the planet. Let my people go. Just a picture on the door now, baby. Oh, now, baby. I don't want to see you coming home to your last drink or sales. I don't want to see the You turn the other cheek. You turn the other cheek. really think it could happen, man? I do! Me too, brother! Hi, Pa! Heck yes! I don't trust politicians anymore! Preach to the choir, brother! Like they're all corrupt! Except Frank Barish! Frank's not a politician, though! True! He's an artist, for God's sakes! I know, that'd be cool for president, man! I feel good, na 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 I knew that I would matter. I smoked a joint in the morning I smoked two joints tonight. I smoked two joints in the afternoon. No, 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 you go to jail for that. Heal! These are the last days. God is coming back. I am the last So I don't know, I think the cause, the root cause of anxiety is not knowing what's gonna happen and not and not having control. It's a loss of control over the future. Either, Either one, one of two, two things, things is going to happen. Either I'm Either going, going to succeed, succeed or I'm going to fail. fail. Billions of dollars in Malibu. Billions and billions of dollars in Malibu. Just extra money. These people have collected extra money. And the artists are starving on the streets. Creative minds wasted or lost in a society that just chases money. At the expense of everything else. Don't tell me I cannot smoke the weed. See, this is the thing. This is going to be a free country. It's going to be a free country. We have to imagine the potential of what a free country could truly be. It's up to us. If we don't do it, who will? You cannot go into a federal building with bugs all over you, sir. And yet okay. I just did. So time my mind plays tricks on me. Beat. Sometimes I give myself the creeps. And I ain't had enough. And I think I've had enough. And I'm not paranoid. And I'm not dead. 
to the beat. In my mind, it's a fact. They covered it up. Oh, yeah. Whether they were behind the killing, I don't know. Oh, yeah, to the beat. Um, oh, yeah, to the beat. I do know this, that the CIA was very scared of Cassidy. Very, they, we really were going to change the world. That's what we were doing, you know? Yeah. And the establishment got very scared of us because we had a lot of power for someone who had no money. And they didn't like that. Entertainer and reggae star Bob Marley is a now patient in the university hospital. Ladies, don't fight over Frankie B. Huh. I love him.